Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and welcome to Class of Fridays. Every Friday I will be looking at a G.I. Joe classified series, thus the name Class of Fridays. This week we are looking at Zartan, one of my all-time favorite figures. I am eager to see what they did with him in the 6-inch scale. Let's start by looking at the packaging. We have a window here so you can see the figure and the accessories. We have the G.I. Joe classified series logo, and we have some artwork. The classified series does not have a single artwork style. Each figure has a different artist and a different art style. Some are better than others, but this is a pretty good one. Some artwork on the side here, and this looks nice. This looks better than some of the other classified figure artwork that I've seen. On the back, we have the generic classified poster art. Nothing really to see here. We've seen this many times before. This is number 23 in the series. On this side, we have the symbols that represent his specialties, and up here, this means money is poison. Poison. This means he is anti-file folder. This one means he's a beekeeper, and this means he is a fan of the John Travolta and Nicolas Cage movie Face Off. Here is a not very interesting story. There was a work of fan fiction by Justin Bell that I got on my Kindle device, and I had the Kindle read it to me using the text-to-voice feature, and the text-to-voice pronounced this name as Zartan. Now, every time I see this name in my head, I say Zartan. Let's take Zartan out of the box and look at the figure. Now that the figure is out of the box, I want to look at one other element of the packaging, and that is this Dreadnoughts logo, which is wicked awesome. I may need that as a tattoo. Here is the figure all geared up. Yes, he is impressive, as he should be. The 6-inch scale allows them to add more detail, articulation, and accessories, so we should expect more detail, articulation, and accessories. The figure includes a black pistol that is highly detailed and is reminiscent of the version 1 pistol, so this is keeping with the traditional Zartan accessories. This is not based on a real-world weapon. It is a futuristic laser gun, which is fine. Again, that is in keeping with what we usually get with Zartan. Although, I think Zartan could have come with a Luger. I think that would have been appropriate. They're almost trying to do a Luger as a laser gun here. Here is the classified pistol next to the vintage original, and it is the same, but different. I think this works for the classified scale, taking the original accessories and not just up scaling them, but adding some additional details. There's no holster for that pistol, and I think there should be. I know the vintage figure didn't have a holster for the pistol, but we are in the classified scale now. We can have working holsters. In addition to the pistol, Zartan included a knife, which fits in a sheath, and that sheath has like a snakeskin pattern on it that looks really good. And the knife itself comes out, and the knife looks really good. Look at this thing. It's got a wicked cool curved blade here with a trigger finger guard. This is not analogous to any vintage accessory, but it's a nice addition. Next, we get to the backpack, and this is analogous to a vintage accessory. And I will point out it has these pegs on each side, and that can be used with the pistol. It's not exactly a holster, but you can press the trigger guard into a peg, and it will hold the pistol. That's not a very responsible way to hold a pistol and it's not a holster but you can store the pistol that way if you are so inclined. The backpack attaches to the figure with a peg and this backpack has a lot going on so let's take a look at it. This is an upscaled interpretation of the version 1 backpack. It even includes some of the same details. Like the pistol it upscales the vintage accessory and adds some details but this does not add very many details. It's a pretty faithful interpretation. There are a couple items attached to this backpack they peg onto the backpack in one of these three holes one of those items is a snake head which is very nicely detailed that's a great sculpt on that accessory and it does seem appropriate for Zartan since he is a swamp dweller the other item pegged to the backpack in the same way is a monkey's claw again very highly detailed nicely sculpted the monkey's claw is a wish granting talisman it's from an old horror story this is a literary reference which i appreciate this backpack does open up the vintage backpack was hinged with a 
clasp on one side. On this one, the face of the backpack is removable to reveal the mask inside. The version 1 backpack stored the mask in a very similar way. It also had some sculpted detail inside the backpack that looked like a makeup kit. The classified backpack does not have those details inside. It does have some really nice details. These details are not a callback to the vintage backpack, but they are still nice. As with version 1, the mask is removable to provide a false face for Zartan. The mask could be worn by the figure in much the same way as the vintage mask, but before I show you that, I want to show you a couple other removable accessories. The cowl is removable to reveal a bald head, not a mohawk, which would have been a nice callback to the version 2 Zartan. Missed opportunity there. He also has this scarf, which is removable. You can place the mask on the figure by wedging it under that cowl. The vintage mask works exactly the same way. And there you have it, Zartan in disguise. It's a good looking mask, but I have one problem with it. Okay, two problems with it. The first problem is the same as with the vintage figure. This does change Zartan's appearance, but he's wearing the same clothes, so this is not going to fool anyone. I think the designers were more concerned with including the feature from the vintage figure rather than fixing the faulty logic of the feature from the vintage figure, which is fine. The figure still looks good. The other problem I have with this face is it has young blood's disease. The eyes have no pupils, which is a bit of a curiosity because Zartan and under the mask does have pupils. This is the reverse of the vintage figure because version 1 Zartan did not have pupils but the mask did. Let's look at the details of this figure and there's a lot to look at. Although this head is a nice sculpt I think he looks more like Zartan with the scarf and the cowl on so I'm gonna look at him that way. The cowl itself has some nice detailing, some texture patterns. It also has this point in the back which is somewhat reminiscent of vintage artwork so that's fine I'm not mad at it. He has his chest plate and his shoulder pads with his belt that has the knife sheath on it. These are separate pieces they're not intended to be removable but I like that they are separate pieces it adds dimension to the figure. He has a muscly body, he has forearm guards, which again are nicely detailed with like texture patterns and buckles. Really well done. Look at this demon head belt buckle. That is wicked awesome. The lower half of the figure has very dark red trousers. So dark it's barely red, but there is a red tint to them. Much darker than the vintage figure. He has black thigh pads, another callback to the version 1 figure. He's got straps around his thighs. He has black knee pads. He has boots with shin guards. This is all really beautifully done, and I love it. The articulation on these classified figures is great. The head has a great range of motion, not exactly hindered by the cowl, but sometimes it's hard to get the cowl turned in the same direction as the head. But if I take that off, you can see excellent range of motion on that head. It can look in every direction. And there are two points of articulation on the neck, at the base of the neck and at the base of the skull. So the head articulation is very good. There is a hinge at the rib cage, there is a twist at the torso. The arms do not move very far up. They're not hindered by those shoulder pads. That's just how far they move. But they do have those double jointed elbows, which I like a lot. The hands at the wrist have swivels. And on the right hand, it has both a swivel and a hinge. The legs have a wide split at the hip, but if you move the legs apart and then move them back, you kind of have to pop them back in their sockets. There is a thigh cut, so movement at the thighs. It has double jointed knees, which I like. There is a boot cut, and the ankles have both the hinge and the rocker. I love this classified Zartan. It may be my favorite classified figure so far, and it shows the potential of the classified series. They can give us characters we know and love, but take full advantage of the larger scale with appropriate callbacks to the classic figures. One feature the classified figure does not have that the vintage figure does is the color change gimmick, and some of the advertising for the classified figure implied that it would be a color changing figure. It does not have the color change 
change plastic, which is fine, but why imply that it would be a color change figure in the marketing? That was my review of G.I. Joe Classified Zartan. I hope you enjoyed it. I am a fan of these classified figures, and I want to continue doing them, but I want to keep these reviews separate from my vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews, which is why I am doing them on a separate day. If you'd like to help me continue doing vintage and modern G.I. Joe toy reviews, please support the channel on Patreon. You can be included in these names you see scrolling on the screen now. I will see you next week for Class of Friday, and until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.